Okay, guys, this is going to be quick because I'm like a kid in the candy store. I can't wait to dig into these bad boys. EQ Magnums. Cast in China. Ooh, looks like we got a cool flash on the, uh, on the camera. I'm not sure if you guys can see, but there is the faintest little bit of blue right on the edge of that chamber. In the bowl, not terrible considering it's a stock bowl with these deep cuts. Let's change that light, see if you can see better. Okay, I think you guys can see that. We got a little bit on the roof. We got a little bit on that side. It's really not terrible. Got some splash on the plug. And just the, the faintest little bit of blue. I think I'm going to wind up doing these chambers like I did to the Aussie uh, EQs. Is knock down this incredibly rough texture they have. Okay, the valve I used was one of my modified Magnum valves. Because it was close at hand and I had to get this done. But... Uh, Looks fairly good. Looks fairly good. Okay, from this view, it looks like the roof of the bowl didn't get touched. Okay. All right, I double-checked. It's hard to see, but that roof does have a little bit of blue on it. You can see we got a little bit of a curve going towards the center of the, the port. There's absolutely nothing on the other side of that gigantic boss. That's okay, we'll fix that. Okay, now for the completely stock flows, the only thing that's not stock about it is it has a back cut on that 192 intake valve. Now, first thing you're going to notice is they don't top out as high as the completely stock <coughs> Mopar Magnum did. Doesn't surprise me. Not even a little bit. This has got inserts in there. Okay? Not as smooth a transition as that ungodly thin bowl that they put in the Magnums. I'll take these any day. Okay, so how do we do? Well, at 300, you got 178. Our low lifts are quite good. All right, 193.3, and by then you already got 1400 in swirl. Check out the swirl curve. Completely dead down low and picks up nicely in the range we're going to be in. Uh, he actually sent me the specs on, on the engine. I actually have to write them down because they're on the phone that I'm holding. So, it's going to be a stroker small block. And it's going to be, uh, it's going to be a nice piece. So, I got to get some, I got to get some CFM out of these for him. All right, we top out. 199.6, that's it. At 400,000. Figure we're going to be running right around 600,000. So we're going to have to pick these bad boys up. Not terrible, though, really. For a completely stock head, not bad at all. You got to remember the old Fuelies. Fuelies with a, a 194, right in that area, right around 200. And with a, a 202, they only float about 208. Okay, so take a look at our airspeeds. Really not bad. You know, it's got a nicer pinch design than the stock Magnums. Remember the stock Magnums were dead up top? These are using that pinch fairly well. Now, we're not pulling a, a tremendous amount of air through it. So as soon as we improve the rest of the port, they're going to get a little too fast. So I definitely have to open that up. Take a look at our roof. Not terrible. A little bit, you know, we got... 14 between them, but not bad. And our short side is not stupid fast, right? And it's relatively even side to side. Not bad for completely stock, guys. The exhaust port. It's a little low on flow. But remember, it's got those heavy cuts inside the bowl. And it doesn't have a top cut on the valve job. Right? So, it'll pick up considerably. I guarantee it. 
Okay. We topped out at uh, 154. 154.3 and I put a pipe on it at 0.6 so it went up to 176. Not terrible. And you know what? According to the air speeds at the bottom, you can see why it's not terrible. Take a look at this. This is quite good for a stock port. All right? 281, 281, 294. A little high in that corner, but not bad right across the top. Take a look at the middle. 320, 321, 340, a little high over here. So what? This is so this is the center of the center of the cylinder is on this side here. This is the cylinder wall side. So it wants to stay right to that cylinder wall, uh, right to the center of the cylinder wall. Come on out. On the top here. Not so much on the bottom. The bottom is almost dead all the way across. So these can definitely use some work. But the top two-thirds of that uh, port are working quite well. So I don't think, uh, I don't see any problems getting some nice gains out of these. Supposedly the valves have been ordered. So I'll probably do what I need to do. I would actually like to leave the guides and the seats until I get the valves. That way I can I can hone the guides if they need it and then I can do the, the valve job. We'll see how long they take to get in because I don't have a lot of patience and I have a bunch of other stuff I got to get done. I still have DV's thousand horsepower cylinder heads that need a ton of work still because they're not making a thousand horse the way they are. So, you know, I got to fix that up for them. In any case, let's see if there was anything, any blue on the short side. Remember, it's got that vein on the floor. Let's see if we can see that. Okay, I'm glad, I'm glad I thought about this. This is tough for me to show because I have to hold the light. But take a look at how much blue we have on that divided wall and on the floor and a little bit on that vein. It's all on the left-hand side of that port, but it's all there. It'll be a lot easier to see once we uh, change this texture of the, of the iron to uh, a brighter color than black. Because right now it just sucks the light up. But it's interesting. It's really not bad stock. These will clean up nice, I guarantee it. Okay, as I tend to do, I almost forgot the bore. It's not bad, really. It looks like I could have hit it with a little bit more blue, but it's really not bad. It's kind of wide. It's got a little chunkiness. It's got a little chunkiness right here. Not bad. I think we're good. All right, guys. I'm going to get grinding on these, so thanks for hanging out.